Hi everybody, Mr. E from Art with Mr. E. And today we'll be doing a product review on the watercolors from Dollar Tree. Now, Dollar Tree's house brand is Crafter Square. Now, from what I read, Crafter Square does predate Dollar Tree. So I don't know if they acquired that company or they just use them for their house brand craft supplies. They have watercolors, acrylics, temperas, a whole bunch of everything there under Crafter Square's name. This is the watercolor. You know, it's a dollar. We have to adjust our expectations sometimes, I think, when we go to a dollar store. This kind of looks like your basic student grade watercolors that you might use with your preschoolers. It's very thin. There's not much product in the pan. It is really laid out strange. It goes from white to purple. I believe that's the purple. Yellow, orange, red, green, blue, black. I've never really seen a palette laid out like this. And it is interesting that they include white, but not brown. I would have rather had a brown. Anyway, it comes with the dreaded black bristled plastic nylon-y brush that absorbs nothing, paints terribly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to bash this before I use it, but I, yeah. I have no place for these brushes in my classroom except for if I'm doing texture on clay and then I have them use this end of the brush to kind of draw into their clay because it's really good for that. <laughs> so we're not going to be using the Crafter Square watercolor brush that comes with the paint set today. Instead, I picked up the Crafter Square paint brushes and I actually had picked up one set, forgot that I had picked up that set and picked up another set and they are different. Look at the ends. Now these brushes, they look nice. I'm excited to see how they actually work. They do look nice. They remind me of something you might pick up at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that, Michael's, in one of their economy packs. We'll see how they go, but they definitely look better than that plastic nylon brush. <laughs> but this is under the Crafter Square as well. And for a dollar, I mean, wow, that's incredible. So let's see how these watercolors work. Now there is a little bit of like sizing in the brushes to keep them prim and proper. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in my cup of water to kind of soften that. I'm going to open up the other ones as well. Uh, they feel a little bit softer than the other ones. The first set that I showed you, ooh, that keeps getting blurry, I'm sorry. Come on, camera. There we go. So let's give these paints a whirl. I'm going to get a, the larger brush out of these just to kind of give them a test. Now, I have a certain way that I like to test my colors. So I'm going to pick up some white. Of course, I don't expect much. It's a little off-white. It shows up on the paper some. Ooh, sorry about that. Rinse my brush out. I am sorry guys, I'm getting used to a new setup here, so it is a little bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. I'm gonna come over here, get some yellow. Test the yellow. Now that is super light. Now there's several reasons that could be. It could be because I did not get enough product on the brush. I did not use enough water. 
Maybe it needs built up. Maybe it is not a good quality paint. <laughs> that is a very light, light yellow. It is very light. I did go back and pick up a whole bunch more product and it is not getting much deeper. So, hmm. Move on to the orange. Rub a dub dub. Rub a dub, rub a dub, rub a dub dub. And I'm going to overlap a little bit and pull the color out. Once again, this color is very pale. Very, 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 very pale. Now, it did help a little bit to go back into the pan, a little less water, and build up that color some. It is still very light. Watercolor is not necessarily light. And it, it is, but it isn't. Watercolor should be, you know, a transparent where you can see through it, but it really shouldn't be quite that pale. I'm sure the red will be very pinky. That's just because that's the way most reds are. Well, you know what? It's not the worst pinky color I've ever seen, although it is very light once again. The colors do blend in each other decently, but when you're that pale, I mean, if you didn't, there'd be a problem. So I build up the color a little bit. All right. Rinse, rinse. I'm going to come over here to what I assume is the blue. Yep, that is the blue. It's actually a very pretty blue. The, the blend here with the red does not make a very pretty purple though. It's more of a muddy kind of color, which that happens with good brands, bad brands, all brands. It's the nature of affordable paints. Yeah, see, that's very muddy, that color in the middle. Rinse that out. Now, I am going to be unorthodox here. I'm going to go to the purple and skipping the green, my favorite color. How dare I? I just kind of want to see how the purple plays with the blue. This is a very bright purple. It's almost a red violet, I feel, if you look at it closely. It mixes, okay, sorry if you're hearing noises. My children and a whole bunch of other children are playing outside. It's summer, that's the way it goes. So there's purple. All right, rinsing out my brush. I'm going to try to pick up some of this green, rub-a-dub-dub, rub-a-dub-dub, rub-a-dub-dub. If you wonder why I do that, that's what I tell my children, my students to do. Whoa, this green, wow, that is, that is very pale, that is very, 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 very light. Yeah, mm -mm, no bueno. It's, I mean, yeah, that is, that is so pale. Y'all, I hate to diss Dollar Tree because it is honestly one of my favorite places on earth. But their watercolors, mm. Now the black, that's not too bad. It's kind of nice, I like that. Of course, black is one of the strongest watercolors out there, so I would hope that it would be a little stronger than the other colors. <laughs> wow. Okay, so it builds, that one builds pretty nicely. Hmm, what do you think, y'all? 
Now, if you watch my other review video the other day, I reviewed Dollar Tree or Dollar Generals. Uh, they had a, a Art Skills watercolor set. It had 36 colors in it, and I actually was was kind of impressed. It was a little bit more towards a gouache and not a watercolor because it was more opaque. But the colors were nice. Uh, yeah. And there was, of course, more variety, and it was it was $4, but, hmm, I think I'd rather spend the $4 and have 36 colors that are a stronger color than to have a dollar for this, because I'm, yeah, I'm not really that impressed. I want to go back to the red, and I'm just going to kind of make a line through here to see how that impacts the colors underneath. Now, what's happening is a lot of it is it's picking up the color completely. It's almost like it's wiping the color away. We're not seeing a lot of the first color showing through the red because it's it's just wiping it clear away. So I don't know how I feel about that either. Alright, let's try mixing a green using their blue, which I like. This blue, I do think that we'll probably get more of an army kind of green because of the type of blue that this is. Let's come over here to the yellow. Oh, this yellow is so pale. Let's see. Hmm. No, no, that's not too bad. That's actually, I, I actually kind of like that green. I think I like that green better than the green that they have in the pan. Let's do 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 do. Oh, I haven't said I do like this brush. This brush is quite nice. It'll be interesting to see how it wears, like whether um, being in water and drying, if that causes it to fray a little bit. You know how the hairs will kind of splay out a little? But no, this this brush is, is really nice. Like, this is the thinner. Yeah, like this. I, I'm kind of a fan of the brushes. Not a fan of the watercolors. But yeah, the brush, the brush works pretty nice. It's, I would much rather go get these brushes for my my children, my children here at home, not necessarily my school children. Um, although I wouldn't mind picking up some of these for some variety of brushes during the course of a year. Like if some of my brushes start looking kind of bad, I wouldn't mind picking some of these up. These are these are decent. And the thing about Dollar Tree is you can order things by the case. So I could get like a case of 24 brushes, or uh, 24 packs of brushes. So these, these sets of brushes have three brushes in each pack. So if, if you know that you have like 24 children in your classroom, that's your largest class, not my largest class, but if you did, <laughs> you could order like a, a box of, of 24, a case of 24 brushes and for 24 bucks and you would have 24 times three and have a nice variety of sizes and shapes of brushes. Like some of them have that kind of a chiseled edge. Some of them are flat. Some of them are more round. I, I'm a fan of the brushes. I think the brushes are nice. I will have to tell you at a later date if they start wearing out quicker. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's possible. I mean, they're a buck. But for a dollar, I think the quality is really, really nice. I, I would definitely buy these for my children here at home to play with over the summer. Much better than those plastic nylon brushes that come with paint sets. <laughs> these are definitely a better quality brush. Now, see, I just took the white through that black. It made very, very little difference. So that's... See, I would have rather just had a brown. Come on, Crafter Square. Why'd you give me white instead of brown? Brown is awesome. 
See, I'm just kind of blending that in. It did lighten it a little bit, but it's not strong. Like this white is really not very strong at all. And part of me wonders if this is really the white paint doing it, or I'm just pulling some of that purple up because my brush is wet. <laughs> so, okay. Um, if you have a preschooler, I would say, sure, why not? Or if you are going to grandma's and you want an activity for your child to do while they're at grandma's to keep them busy, then stop by Dollar Tree and pick this up. If you want to have your kids paint more and create more at home, I would not recommend this set. You would be better off going to get Prang is my favorite student watercolor, but Faber-Castell has a great watercolor set. Crayola's watercolors have gotten better. I used to be not a fan of Crayola's watercolor, but they have improved over the years. So if you want to pick up their watercolor sets, that would be good as well. But I, I just don't know if this is worth your money. We do have a little bit of color change there. That's good. But yeah, uh, the brushes, buy the brushes. The brushes are really nice for a dollar. These, these are very nice brushes. I would not get the watercolor set, all right? And plus, I'm almost to the bottom of a couple of these, and I've only painted this little amount. So there's that as well. You're gonna get more product in Prang and in Crayola and in the Faber-Castell. Now Faber-Castell is more expensive, but they're definitely a better quality and you get more product in them. Yeah. So this is not my favorite thing. Dollar Tree, I love you. Dollar Tree craft department area, I love you. But this is not something I would buy again. All right, so now you know. Dollar Tree, Craft Square, watercolors, avoid. Dollar Tree, Craft Square, Crafter Square, brushes, get. They're, they're great. All right, have an awesome day, friends. Bye-bye.